Well, you know, every two or three months we do a show like tonight, which is our community show where we celebrate you, the Global Peace Tribe, and all the members of our community. And of course, we've heard from Maggie, and we're going to hear more from her tonight about the Global Peace Tribe from an astrological point of view. But tonight we are celebrating one of our original members. He was with us going all the way back to Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe days. Um, and both he and his beloved wife are people that we just love very much. But we're going to learn all about another side of Andrew Bailey. We know that he's a filmmaker. We know that he's a teacher. He's an author. He's a lecturer. But he also taught Andy Warhol everything Andy learned, knew about pop art. Um, uh, well, maybe not. Um, but he is a pop artist. So hello, Andrew. Um, welcome back to the show. Of course, we've been on before teaching about the trust frequency. Um, but tonight we get to see another side of you. Hey, Scott. Hello, everybody. It's just a real treat to be here. Um, yeah, there's probably very few of you who have ever thought of me as an artist, a pop artist. I'm best known perhaps as a photographer, filmmaker, stuff, a musician, music producer, stuff like that. So um, I've got a little, Scott, I've got a little tiny one minute and 40 second uh, video I made of a show that just came down yesterday. It ran here in East Hampton in um, Eastern Long Island in New York. Uh, for the month of October, and my part of the show was a four four artist show. My part was called Queens of America, and America does not have monarchs. I always have a little bit of a political or a social or a spiritual component to everything I do. In fact, this is a brand new piece that I'm just completing as we speak. It's called the Loving Universe. So um, it's all one great big love story. So this little um, video, I think I'm going to start with that just to sort of set the stage. And um, it does have a piece of music that I composed as the soundtrack. So what Wonderful. do I do? And Scott, can I go right ahead and do that? Yeah, go ahead and screen share. Make sure you optimize okay. sound. And what do I do? Optimize sound for video, right? Exactly. Op optimize for video shit clip. Okay, let's give it a shot. Here we go. This um, image, first image you'll see is the Queen of Sheba, and there's a whole bunch of other queens, and some of the queens are male, some are female. Um, Andy Warhol was a famous cross-dressing drag queen. You know, there's all this sort of stuff. So here we go. I think, share. And play. <laughs> So well, there. that was interesting. I love that. And now that wasn't all queens. I did throw some other stuff in there just to give it a little more uh, more variety. This is a project that I've been developing since um, the early 1980s. And if I can find the the actual piece, I did it. The very first thing in this series I did, I called her um, 
25th, 25th, not 21st or 20th, but 25th century Aphrodite as sort of future digital um, pixelated angel of love. And I'll find that for you. So I've been doing this for a long time and now the technology has changed and shifted so I can really be playful and productive and have a lot of fun with this. So they're purely digital in their origin. Um, I have another aspect that I call my digital watercolors that are my photography that I transmute into beautiful digital paintings, if you will. But these are actually 100% digitally generated and put out, um, printed on exhibition, fine art quality canvas on one of these widescreen printers. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it and people are really liking it. So I'm wide open to questions or input or feedback. And um, after a little bit, I'd like to go to our, um, Connie and I actually have a an art for our started with our photography, but it's the pop art and the photography and it's Cameron Baxter Gallery. So we can go there and take a little tour of some imagery. Scott, what, what thoughts do you have? Well, I have a couple questions for you. I um, I love that you talked about how everything you do has some sort of a spiritual or social statement or connection. So I would love for you to take us through that with maybe a couple of the pieces, sort of the piece that's behind you. How, how you weave your creative expression with social consciousness or even spiritual awakening. So there's sort of a term that seems to be emerging. It's called conscious creativity, right? So we can make music, we can make inspiring, uplifting music, we can do paintings, we can make films, all of these different manifestations of the creativity of the human being. I like to call it AI, the artist inside. Because if you really want to know what AI means, it's actually the emerging artist, the emerging spirit of humanity. So if if you go back to the pop art of the 1960s, it was a huge global phenomenon. It was very, very big. Those paintings that Andy Warhol who was selling for $25 are now 25 to 125 million for the same piece of piece of art, okay? But they were Campbell's soup cans and tooth, tubes of toothpaste and very mundane objects. What I'm doing is completely different in that I'm trying to evoke in the most minimal form the spirit of certain aspects of the universe. So in those queens that you just saw, there was who, who, for example, it asked, asked this very political question, who is the Queen of America? Is it Queen Elizabeth? That would be Elizabeth Taylor. She's a candidate. Or if you're a Christian, perhaps you might say, oh, it's Queen Mary, the Virgin Mary. So there's all of these beautiful, deeply spiritual energies that are within these images. So each of these has a story behind it. That the very first image you saw there, the, the wild African lady with a blue face. What's she doing as a queen of America? Well, I call her the queen of Sheba. And I don't know if you know this, but the queen of Sheba, countless generations ago, went to visit King Solomon. King Solomon actually raped her, apparently, got her pregnant, and started the lineage that became the Ethiopian Empire that leads us all the way to Haile Selassie, all the way to Rastafari, all the way to the present day Rastafarian religion, which has come to America. So the Queen of Sheba is a candidate for a Queen of America. And there was Freddie Mercury. Was he a queen? Well, he had a band called Queen and so on. So we're just playing with this, playing with gender identity all these controversial things, and the deep inner spirit of these, of these beings that we can evoke through very simple lines and bold, simple colors. Does that make any sense? Mm, absolutely. You know, what came to my mind when you asked who is the Queen of America, immediately I got the image of the Statue of Liberty. 
Ooh, um, that's out of her. Uh-huh. Yeah, so you got to add her there because that for so many and most of our, or many of our ancestors, that was the very first thing they saw when they came to America. The first thing they saw was the Statue of Liberty and they're greeting them. So that, that would be my Queen of America. Okay, yeah. Yeah, good good for you. Yeah, people keep suggesting different queens. I mean, there's, you know, there's... Um, George Angela. Noble George Noble is suggesting the queen of sexuality, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe is an obvious candidate. I actually don't have her in that show. I have, I've done Marilyn, and a very obvious one. I think I started with Marilyn. Yeah. Yeah, no um, question. Well, we've got some questions that are coming in from our audience. Uh, Diara wants you to tell us more about the figures in Paris. The what? The figures in Paris. Diara writes, tell us more about the figures in Paris. Oh, thank you. Oh, cool. Okay, so there are two figures at the end in Paris, right? One of them is a chihuahua, and he's wearing a black beret. I almost always wear a black beret. Right, so here we are. I am a Frenchman, and I wear my black beret, and people say, oh, you must be an artist. You've got that Eiffel Tower behind you. So that dog, that bright green dog, is actually me. I don't know if you remember a book, James Joyce's early book called Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. And then the poet Dylan Thomas did Portrait of the Artist as a Young Dog. And that painting is called Portrait of the Dog as a Young Artist. And he's asking a question. He's got his palette with his colors, his brushes. He's got the Eiffel Tower in the background. He's got the Black Beret, and he's asking a question. He's saying, am I an artist yet? Asking that question, what is an artist? What is art? What does it take to be an artist? So that's part of that. And then the, sec the, the last image was a sort of self-portrait, as you may have guessed. So there's a whole series I did, and I'd love to share it with you at some point. It's, it's kind of funny. I, was get, I get into very comedic things. I have a character who came to Paris in the year 1620, just as the Mayflower was sailing across the Atlantic, this UFO the spaceship dropped off this intergalactic anthropologist, ethnographer in the grimy streets of Paris and said, just blend in with the locals, take a lot of notes and we'll be back. And they left him there. And he tried to blend in with the locals, but he had a problem. His skin was chartreuse. It was bright green. There's no way he could blend in with the locals except after dark. So he became this nocturnal character. And the only person, the only creature who would come close to him was this cat. So he bonded with this cat. Now, whole story, I think it might be a children's book. Anyway, that dog, that chihuahua, started out as a cat, mutated, decided to want to be a dog. It's very silly, absolutely silly, because a part of pop is that pop is fun. It is bright. It is laughter inducing. It's heart opening. It's it's joyful. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> um, there's a lot of comments coming in right now. Um, we're going to go back for a moment. I'm, I'm going to get to a couple of other questions in a moment. But uh, Dia Therese writes, uh, wasn't the Queen of Sheba, Nefertiri, in an earlier lifetime, the mother of Akhenaten? I don't know, but maybe you know I about that. I don't either. I only know. Oh, and one thing that's interesting is in the website, I have little stories. Sometimes they're out of Wikipedia telling you who the characters are and what their oh. history is. Oh, and that's fun. Eva traveled. She was like the queen of present day Ethiopia, and she made a journey to King Solomon and was impregnated by him. And that's all I know about it and returned pregnant. That was Susan Blomquist writes, Susan writes that there is a story that Queen Sheba took the Ark of the Covenant back home to Ethiopia. So that's interesting. No, I haven't heard that. We have, a couple more, <clears throat> we have a couple more nominations for Queens of America. <clears throat> Sylvia suggests Michelle Obama. And uh, Diara uh, suggests... Uh, Michelle, uh-huh. Yeah, you've done Michelle. Does and Barack Marian. And Marian. Don't, don't forget Marion Williamson. She's a candidate. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. DR suggests Taylor Swift, the queen of young teens. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've got Beyonce. 
because I was trying to be okay. culturally, culturally diverse as well. This is good. This is very good. All right, we have another question. Um, going back, um, Maureen wanted you to just tell us more about the recent uh, painting that's directly behind you. So this is brand new. By the way, I'm sitting in a building that I designed and built 24 years ago. 25 years ago, this was a lawn. This was a beautiful lawn in West Hampton, New York. And a friend of mine had, who had purchased this property approached me and said, could I design and build for her a studio? So that's what this is. Connie's in another room, all the way down there. She's right around the corner. And I designed and built this beautiful building. It's an artist's studio, but it has three bedrooms, three bathrooms. And it's used for writing, painting, poetry, and spiritual meditation retreats. And we are all built this place, and we're always welcome here. So just finished a show, and I just showed you that, um, that little video from that show. The next show opens on my birthday, which is coming up in two weeks Friday. And this is my contribution to that show. So this is a sneak preview. You're seeing this for the first time. It's four feet wide by five feet high. And 20 artists are given a canvas of those dimensions. And this show is, it's called Open Season. And that is coming up in a couple of weeks. And this is that piece. It's ready. It's done. It's ready to frame. And the content, and the content of it is the love story of the universe. You can, I think you can see the divine feminine there and the divine masculine is clearly stricken. He's just turning into one big throbbing heart. I mean, what are you going to do? I love that. Um, Sylvia writes, by the way, that she was part of a church in the late 1990s where she was known as the mother of the queens. So we honor you, Sylvia, as the mother of the queens. Um, George Noble points out that the Cathars were the last true Christians in which women were as important as men. Uh, Ayata points out, we were talking about 1620, that was the year that her great-grandfather sailed from England to the Virginia colony, a mm. great-grandfather times 12, I should mm -hmm. say. Um, and uh, all right, I don't see any other questions right now, so I'll ask you one more. What, uh, are you going to take this on tour? How are we going to? get more people to experience your pop art. Yeah, exactly. So fortunately, we can, we certainly can expose it to people, share it with people online. That's helpful. I'm just this, I'm just, I'm just coming out of the closet with this, Scott. It's brand new and it is for sale. And as you know, we're making a film called In Search of the Future. And this is part of my fundraising strategy. If I can sell enough art, if people will buy these paintings and we can spend it on making this beautiful film, hmm, and I think there's a lot of people in, in the show who know exactly what we're talking about there. I'm trying to find the website. I think I'll um, open that up. Scott, did Connie put the website in the- Yeah, yeah, she put it in. So I, I can open it galleries, up. Camera yeah, exactly. Um, so let me open that up for us. Yeah. And we'll take a look. Um, it's Cameron Baxter Galleries. We're going now to Cameron Baxter Galaxy Galaxies. Ah, <laughs> you can see where my head is at. Cameron okay. Baxter Galleries, not Galaxies. Right. right. Um, Galaxy. and, uh, and you are providing a 20% discount on yeah, people's exactly. first order. Yeah, so click that away, that discount. Yeah. There. And that first one there, that's the Queen of New York. It's based on a transvestite I ran into one night in the streets of Manhattan. I um, love it. Very, as you can tell, exceedingly exotic being. And I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the Queens of America. Yeah, there's Maryland. Since we talked um, about it, so there's Maryland. There's the Queen Maryland. of New York, Madonna, the Virgin, Frida, Frida Guadalupe. Guadalupe. Grandmother circa 1915, the Queen of and Sheba. The, and, and the last one is 25th century Aphrodite, 1984. Click on that one, Scott. Okay, I'm clicking on it. What, what happens? It's Something not opening. Let's see if it works up. I got it. There we go. Yeah. 
So that started wow. as a black and white photograph and was fed into a $150,000 one-of-a-kind custom computer graphic system at the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. Big mouthful there, but those were the days. This is long before Photoshop, about 1982. And I came up with this very strange looking being. So I've been doing this for a while. Wow. Well, this is this is exciting. This is really exciting. And um some new messages that have come in. I'm going to read those. And Diara says, I love your music as well as your artwork. Maureen, our dear friend, says Andrew is, has been a designer and builder of houses and spaces. In addition to all the rest. Yes, I agree, Maureen. Sitting, in, I'm sitting a, inside one, Maureen. Thank you. I'm sitting inside one right now. In fact, you were just in New Jersey at New York Airport about 70 miles from here. I wish you'd just stop by. Really, I'd love to share this with you. This place is fun. And you were just with our beloved friends, Kristen Hoffman and we were, David we Gershon. Were, we were. David Gershon and Kristen over the weekend up Woodstock Way, interviewing them for the In Search of the Future movie. Beautiful. And we're going to learn a little bit more about the In Search of the Future movie. I think you're going to show the trailer a little bit later on today when we bring Connie back on. 